And also within them, what we call the religious or the mystical dimensions, there are all these visionary experiences where the ego is still intact, if you will. And I'm here looking at uh, the Virgin Mary, the Christ, the Buddha, uh, precious gemstones, prior civilizations, whatever. Who knows where all that stuff comes from? But it's incredibly beautiful. It's incredibly meaningful to people when they happen. Uh, it's like meeting a personal manifestation of the divine in some sense or symbol. But then, if you will, in and through and perhaps beyond that is the um, unitive consciousness where there's no you perceiving anymore. It's like uh, you're the drop, the drop of water has merged with the ocean as Hinduism would uh, depict it. And you, now the consciousness is that of the ocean, you know? Right, yeah. Uh, but both experiences seem to be possible for many, if not all, human beings, you know? Yeah. Uh, in the scholarship of mysticism, in the past, we used to talk about Western mysticism that was meeting the personal deity, you know, uh, my devotion to Jesus or, or whatever. And uh, Eastern mysticism that was depicted as the uh, drop of water in the ocean, you know, the unitive, uh, all is one consciousness. And now it looks like... Uh, both of those experiences are in the web repertoire uh, of all of us or accessible to all of us, whether we happen to be born in the East or the West. And that opens up a whole new frontier in religious studies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think those visionary experiences, I'd love to get into more detail with you because I feel like the mystical states of consciousness I've, I've I guess, had more experience with and the, but the visionary ones when they occur are astounding and i find them intellectually just fascinating as to where yeah how this 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 content is is arising um and i feel like you talk about kind of the idea kind of jungian idea of archetypes as maybe being a useful way to navigate this this kind of inner space yeah and, and it, it's progressive sometimes like there's a vision say of a a precious stone say a diamond and there's a sense of approaching it and then kind of entering into one facet of it or going deeper into more facets than the experience of becoming the diamond or entering into the light that's going through. You know, it's hard to put into words, we, you know, but, but there's a, a progression of getting deeper and deeper involved or, uh, a classic uh, Christian experience would be uh, uh, a vision of, of the Christ, or Jung would say the Christ archetype, you know, which he felt was an archetype of the self within everyone, whether they're, they grow up in Christian or not. And maybe there's the archetype of the dancing Shiva within each of us, whether we grow up Hindu or not, you know. But th there's this image that seems very alive and vibrant and full of emotion. And you approach it, you bow before, but then you become almost engulfed by it, accepted by it. You enter into the essence of it. And you may go through that into uh, intuitive, uh, unitive types of insights. But the whole trajectory is exquisitely meaningful and beautiful you know yeah yeah i think that the idea that something like the christ archetype exists within us you know and, and you write and say that you know this is something that maybe exists within us before the historical jesus kind of came along and then happened to kind of match mm -hmm. that that archetype um that's an idea that yeah resonates a lot i think i feel like it's a it really is something that can help people navigate healing in in these domains you know identification with with the, a figure that surrenders fully and is willing to kind of to just to give the, their ego their identity over in in the kind of service of, of the greater good of, of healing and and uh, redemption 
I feel like that's an incredibly powerful resonant um, thing that I feel like exists within us, whether or not you're raised Christian. Mm -hmm. And then you also talk about the kind of Hindu gods as well that you know people see across cultures, people see Hindu gods in in their experiences as well, right? Like Shiva or just these these mm -hmm. these deities, um, or even just a creator god of some kind. Um, yeah. yeah, one of, one of the amazing things that that's almost mundane and hardly noticed in psychedelic research is how often people experience content that's uh, not part of their enculturation. It's not what they learned as children growing up. You know, it's like uh, tapping into a whole different. But some people even feel like or claim they can speak foreign languages and who knows what's going on, you know. But there certainly are resources within us, uh, however we understand them, that go far beyond our, uh, um, what we learned in school, you know, right. yeah. and what our families taught us, and whether that's genetically encoded or spiritually accessed, whatever that means. Uh, but um, uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, there's definitely more to us than just the kind of personal narrative self of, of just the story we tell about our lives, right? There's a lot more going on in our minds. And uh, yeah, you also write about kind of visions, interacting with entities like angels and demons. This is another thing people experience a lot, right, as well. Um, and also kind of temple architecture, temple spaces, it's kind of almost like Islamic geometry. Um, yeah. and these are all in the kind of visionary realm, I guess, right? Yeah, some of the, well, I think I had the opportunity to visit the uh, Blue Mosque in uh, Esfahan in Iran uh, at one time. And if you just look at some of that Islamic architecture, uh, the entranceways, the uh, the domes with intricate, interrelated patterns. I mean, if you've had a psychedelic experience in depth, you you recognize it. You, those architects were trying to create the visionary world in this their architecture, and the yeah. same may be true of the Gothic cathedral. You know. Like, like it's trying to build that visionary world somehow in, in this reality, the, the high Gothic arches, the rose windows, uh, uh, even the gargoyles. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's angels and demons. Uh, it's the visionary world, you know? And maybe that's why we feel a certain sense of awe and reverence intuitively when we go into those spaces, even if we're not Christian or we're not Islamic or, or whatever our religion is, uh, there's just kind of a intuitive hushed uh, feeling of awe that happens yeah. in those buildings, you know? Yeah. I also think it's not even necessary that the architects necessarily had full-on visionary experiences, but you can imagine that we have this template inside of ourselves as to what triggers these feelings. And, you know, as a child entering a church, they, they know there's, this is a special place and it has a certain quality. So you can imagine someone building these things without even having necessarily had a, a vision of it. But then if you have a visionary experience, suddenly it's like, here you go, here's the template <laughs> that exists inside you that you're trying to match to, to these things out there in the world. Right. Yeah, and I think also, I guess there's other people also have these kinds of conversion experiences, I guess you kind of pointed to as well, or, or redemptive yeah. experiences as well, right? Yeah, yeah, just the, uh, which is common in the Protestant religion, especially many forms of evangelical Protestantism, of, uh, you know, giving your heart to Jesus, you know, like relinquishing control owning your guilt, owning your unresolved grief, uh, being open and honest in a supportive congregation that, you know, you can experience whatever you want and we won't call you crazy. <laughs> we'll say you're having a religious experience. 
And there often is a sense of incredible uh, release, relief, uh, sometimes a sense of the presence of something sacred or divine, you know. And uh, we call those conversion experiences. Um, and uh, they're incredibly meaningful to a lot of people, you know. Right. Uh, you really feel kind of reborn, like there's a new beginning, you know. Uh, 